Hello, and welcome to Good Grief, the podcast dedicated to demystifying and destigmatizing grief with compassion and humor. I'm Nikki, I'm an end of life doula and a grief coach in Columbus, Ohio. And today we are going to talk about grief and anger. Grr. That was my angry noise. Anyway, anger is one of those feelings that does come with grief, sometimes not always. And it's another one of those emotions that we tend to label as quote unquote bad. And I've said several times on this show, if you've listened to any more than one episode, you will probably have heard me say that there are no good or bad emotions. They just are. So, but it is one we historically label as bad. So let's, let's talk about that just a little bit. Why, why do we get angry when we grieve? What does it mean? And how can we maybe use this in a constructive and good way? I know, hear me out. Anger, anger is not bad. Like I said, anger can be good. It's, anyway, we'll get into that. This, uh, this subject came to me, my mom had sent me, hi mom. My, <laughs> my mom sent me this really interesting article from, I will link it in the description. I, there's a few things I've read. I will probably link in the description. But this one article my mom sent we sent to me was regarding Peggy Rowe, who is the mom of Dirty Jobs star Mike Rowe. So most of you probably know who Mike Rowe is. If not, you you might recognize him if you Googled him. He hosted a show for a long time called Dirty Jobs. He has a fantastic sense of humor. And he had a has a very large social media presence. He does a lot of videos, a lot of Facebook posts, a lot of like public journaling in a way, and has a great sense of humor. And through those, his mom started kind of making appearances here and there. And she's just delightful and kind of developed her own little cult following. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she's I, I I don't follow either of them directly, but I do. My mom sends me stuff all the time, and I I absolutely love everything I read. So. But there was an article regarding her and how she had cancer, but her reaction to it was was anger, and she took it out on people around her. And she talked once about she got so upset with her husband, she threw a salt shaker at him. And it, it, I, like I said, I'll link this. I'm not going to go through the entire article, but it's a really good read. But the the crux of this is that she she finally found support groups. She found other people she could talk to. And it helped her understand because she, it wasn't just anger. You know, if you read through it, she had a lot of emotions during this and she was confused and scared and angry and, and everything. And she just never had an outlet to really kind of explore this with other people. And she found support groups and it, it did wonders for her. She couldn't it was like almost instantly. She was like, this is where I need to be. This is great. Um, she, the first day she went in, she told about the incident with throwing a salt shaker. <laughs> and, uh, somebody immediately piped up. That's nothing. I threw a plate of sausages at my husband the other morning for absolutely no reason. So things like that. So all, all is that to say is anger is an absolutely normal response absolutely normal response to grief and and hers was her cancer diagnosis so she she was having a grief with that but grief and anger tend to go hand in hand a lot of especially when it comes to unexpected or traumatic losses people can become incredibly angry like why did this happen to me why did why is this person gone why did I mean, I've, I've heard people say things about like, why did God take this person for me? Things like they, they get angry, they angry at the world, the universe, their gods, whoever. And sometimes they, and anger is one of those emotions that it's hard to just feel. You, you can, you can just feel angry, but most people that, that is such a strong emotion within us that we, th we throw it outwards, whether we mean to or not, especially if we hold that anger long enough, it explodes. But one, one of the interesting things I have, I've learned in all this is anger is one of those feelings that makes us feel powerful. I try really hard not to, you know, talk about topical and political things, you know, unless it has to do with grief or, or, you know, laws around medical aid and dying. Even then I try, I try to, you know, keep myself unbiased on, on the, those things. But there's a lot of people around the world today that are just angry all the time. And it feels like we're seeing more of that. 
And I feel like a lot of, especially during COVID, a lot of people got very angry during COVID. It was a lot of, a lot of things were happening. And as an entire world, we didn't know what we were really dealing with and we weren't sure what to do. So we were trying to err on the side of caution and, you know, put these regulations out and, you know, like try to keep everybody safe. But everybody was scared. We were all scared, whether you want to admit it or not, or whether, you, whether, you know, a person believes that COVID exists or not, it doesn't matter. We were all scared. And we were now suddenly taken away from our normal lives. Like Everything's changed. We can't go to the grocery store anymore. Or maybe you lived in places where you were literally not allowed to leave your house. And they would patrol areas. This, you know, there were other countries that were doing that. You were allowed out for a certain amount of time things like that but we we had to stay home we couldn't go to the grocery store when we our freedoms were stripped away right in 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 a way and for some people that was that was hard and it was scary and everything was different so people got angry they lashed out because they were feeling out of control they suddenly had no control over what what they could do in a day where they could go and and they lashed out and that's a that's a big reason why we get angry when we're grieving we have no control. Something was taken from us, be it, you know, a person that has passed away, uh, a, a a disability that's taken away one of our physical abilities, whether it's an illness or Alzheimer's, ALA, whatever. When we're grieving something, it's because something was taken away from us. Or at least that's how you can view it. Something is gone. Something that you had is no longer there. And it can make you feel so powerless and so helpless and a response to that, to to bring back some power to yourself, is to be angry. So yeah, that's that's why anger is such a prominent emotion with grief. It's just a way of trying to bring power back to ourselves. And again, anger is one of those motion, emotions that is hard to just feel. And it's one that ends up being expressed whether we want it to or not. So that's why Peggy Rowe probably threw a salt shaker at her husband at one point. She was angry. Of course she was angry. She was going through a lot. and. That was one of those feelings that just bubbled out. And a lot of times we don't mean to hurt those around us. Maybe we do. Maybe hurting people around us is another way we feel powerful. But this is when you can really explore why do I feel so helpless? And this doesn't, I mean, this is anything in life. This, If you're feeling angry about something that's not even a grief or a loss, take a moment to think about why why is this angering me so much and if you can kind of explore those feelings why am I, maybe i'm feeling helpless about something what am i feeling helpless about and why and what else can i do to take that feeling away or can i just let it go and allow myself to be a little helpless i'm not saying don't get angry anger's okay i get angry too we all do but it's it's a it's a good time to kind of sit back and explore those feelings and why you have them and I, I'm, I'm a bit of a hothead and I, I tend to explode. I'll lash out from time to time, um, which I will al- almost instantly be embarrassed that that happened. I'll be horrified that I was rude to somebody or yelled at somebody or whatever. And I will, it, it's hard, but it, it takes some time once I kind of come down from that. I usually sit back and think, why was, what happened that made me so angry? And it was like, well, I don't let, let's say somebody cut me off in traffic, right? That's that's a beautiful example uh, that I feel like road rage is such a, a thing these days. Like somebody cut me off in traffic. Well, why was I so angry? Like they cut me off. They did something not nice. Maybe they did it on purpose. But why am I angry about that? That's something that somebody else did. They They didn't know who I was. I was just an anonymous vehicle behind them, you know, and they did something rude. But what about that? made me angry. Well, they got in my way. They could have caused an accident that would take away my vehicle from me for possibly ever. And Lord knows I can't afford another vehicle. They, they just, they did something I didn't want. Okay. Well, maybe it was an accident. Maybe they didn't mean to cut me off. Either way, it's just, it's, it's interesting to me to sometimes explore my feelings and why I react at a certain way. Maybe that's not everybody's thing, but with grief it's a perfect opportunity to sit back and think about why are you so like what is it about this it's making me angry am i feeling helpless because my loved one has died okay that's completely understandable go ahead and be angry and then when you're not angry anymore think about it a little a little while and think what can i do to honor my loved one what can i do 
to keep them close to me and and feel nothing but happy memories or and just feel love for them and respect and honor okay so that's that's one example (laughs) of anger and grief and the the lack of power but there's another reason why grief can make us angry and this article is incredibly interesting it's an older one i found that briefly discusses biobehavioral synchrony (laughs) big big fancy words for basically meaning attachments so it's and i'll just read this directly it is the coordination of biological and behavioral processes between attachment partners during social contact So it is things like your hormones, heart rate, your brain rhythms, a lot of things will sync up with another person when they be when they're a a safe space, there's a huge bond between I talked a bit about at one point about the the rhesus monkey study with, you know, pulling the babies away from their mothers and, and, and learning more about comfort. There's also a bond that happens between caregiver and child, whether it's, you know, mother, father, whomever, that is a biobehavioral synchrony. Your body learns what feels safe and what doesn't, right? And then we develop attachments to people in that way. And when that person when that person or thing is suddenly severed, our body doesn't know what to do. That safe synchronization is is gone. And with that, we don't we're already hurting. This this is scary. This is bad. Our our, our sacred space, our safe space, whatever is now gone. And, and we're scared and we're hurt and we don't want any more of this. So it's, this is, these are the times where we become hypervigilant to any other signals in the universe that something might, bad might happen. We might sever ties with other relationships because we don't want to risk going through that again. We might not talk to people. We might get, and, and anger is a way of, of pushing people away. Even if it's completely unconscious, sometimes we are using anger to push people away when we don't mean to. And that's, just our body and our our psychosis, our you know, our brains just saying, uh uh-uh, uh, I need to be safe, keep everything away from me so nobody else can hurt me again. Whether you mean to or not, that's just one of those things that can happen. We might react in a disproportionately angry manner to other people just to avoid possibly feeling that level of hurt again. I know I'm guilty of that. Sometimes even consciously I will push people away because I'm afraid of being hurt again because of, you know, losses I've suffered. And I think that's normal. A lot of us do that. Again, even if it's unconscious and we don't know we're doing it. There were some really interesting examples in this article, and I'm not going to read all of them. Uh, Here's a short one. Um, uh, Again, I'll link this so you can read it. I was angry with my friends for talking about their kids' upcoming prom plans when they know that my daughter had died and will never be able to go to prom. Beyond the anger itself, I felt guilty for being angry because I care about them and their kids. Of course, I want their kids to have wonderful prom. Even if I know I would feel angry if they were putting, if they were trying to shelter me from any conversations about their kids, I'd feel left out or like they were trusting, treating me as broken if they stopped sharing their joys with me. So this, this person was feeling anger for, you know, being told about these things their kids are going to do, their friend's kids are going to do that her, his or her, you know, daughter can't do. But they also said they would feel angry if they stopped talking to them about these things. So it's just anger at the situation. There's more in here i will absolutely let you read at your leisure so so what do we do with this anger well first off as i mentioned i talked a little bit earlier about exploring your emotions before any of that as i said and we'll say a million times there are no good or bad emotions they're just emotions if you're feeling angry feel angry obviously try to find constructive ways to use that anger go for a walk uh, if, you know, sometimes physical activity can help release those endorphins that are stuck in your body, <laughs> you know, do some physical activity, go for a walk, go for a run, go for a bike ride. Uh, if you're unable to do that, take yourself outside and scream at the sky. I, I think I've mentioned that before, but man, sometimes just yelling at the sky <laughs> makes you feel better. I've done it too. I dropped something on my foot and I just sat down and I yelled at the ceiling you know, it hurt really bad. And it's, it was, it angered me for a minute. And I just sat back and I was like, ah, at the ceiling. Okay. (laughs) If I felt better, right? Sometimes just going out and releasing that emotion constructively and without hurting another person can be so helpful because it just takes the sting out of it, releases a little bit. 
And like I say, you won't feel angry when you're done. You might still feel angry, but it's not going to be so like huge within you. So just let yourself feel these feelings and then let them pass. And then when you're past them or when you're, when you've stopped feeling the sting or the, the, the biggest part of that emotion, take a minute to think about it. Really explore. Okay. I just exploded. I just had this huge thing. I just screamed at my, I threw a salt shaker at my husband. Why did I do that? Okay. I was angry. Okay. Fair enough. Why was I angry? Angry because I have a cancer diagnosis. Okay. What about that cancer diagnosis is making me angry? I might have my freedoms taken away. I might die early and everything will be different. Everything has changed now. Okay, fair enough. That's a perfectly valid reason. You don't need a valid reason to be angry. Our feelings are our feelings. But okay, well, what can we do to make, make things feel less angry? What can I do to make me less angry about this? How can I respect and honor what is happening in a constructive way? So that's my advice. So says I. (laughs) All right. I went on a bit. I I, I didn't get heated, but I got, I got passionate about that one. That's good. Sometimes when I record these episodes, they're a lot longer than what I give to you all because I edit out a lot. (laughs) I edit out my pauses and ums and uhs because sometimes I have to pause because I forget what the heck I was just saying. Yeah, sometimes I catch myself getting really amped up and I'm like, am I angry? What's going on here? And I just sit back and think, nope, I'm just very passionate about what I'm doing. So you're welcome. I'm passionate about this. I think you all know that by now. Okay. (laughs) Well, since we're at the end of the episode, it is now time for (laughs) the death deck. But today it's the end of life deck. (laughs) I don't know why I just feel like pulling for uh, uh, pulling from this deck for today. So I'm gonna shuffle them up. Pull one at random. Okay, to live again, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and imagine a moment in your life that you would love to relive right here, right now. Open your eyes, and if you're comfortable, share it out loud. Ooh, that's. I love that. And that's one of those things I I do with my clients. I do a lot of creative visualizations when they're upset or hurting or scared. Um, I will ask them to think of a moment in their life that was just beautifully happy and why, and then have them close their eyes and explain everything to me in complete vivid detail. Like what was the weather like? What did you smell? What did you see? Who was wearing what and where? Yeah, I just, and getting them to just really see and feel that is so powerful. So I recommend that anytime you're feeling angry or upset, (laughs) do a little creative visualization. So as for me, I, you know, there are so many moments in my life I'm, that were beautiful and happy and I'm proud of. And I just feel like I have several to pick from. I can't think of one. Like I, I imagine most people out there would say the birth of my child or my mar- or my, my wedding day or things like that. Um, I don't know. I would probably pick a mundane day. I, I was just having this conversation with somebody else. A lot of times it's those mundane things. Like if we could have somebody back for a day that we've lost, what would we want to do with them? And a lot of times, like, I just want to hang out with them again. I want to go get a cup of coffee, you know, and just talk. And that's not climbing Mount Everest. And that's not, you know, doing some grand, huge thing or getting married or having babies. It's just having coffee. And I, I'm not going to pick one right now, because there are a million of those days in my life, I would love to just, I, obviously, I, w- I would love to sit down and have a conversation with my brother again. I would love to talk to my grandfathers. They both passed away before I was born. Um, those were moments I did not live. But, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, honestly, probably just something really mundane that was just a beautiful memory. All right. That's it, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you are having a great week. But if you're not and you need a little help, the folks at BetterHelp are there for you. <laughs> a huge shout out to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it's 100% online. So you don't have to wear pants if you don't want to for therapy. 
With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences, and BetterHelp will match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel most comfortable. Either it's text, chat, phone call, video, Zoom, Skype. Carrier Pigeon is not listed on their services, but I'm willing to bet they might find a way to have that happen if you would like Carrier Pigeon. (laughs) You can message your therapist at any time if you would like. Schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. So if you want to do them in the evenings or on weekends, perfect. And if for any reason you don't like your therapist, you can switch at any time at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked just for you. Get more scheduling flexibility at a more affordable price. And you can get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Nikki the Death Doula. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Nikki the Death Doula. You can find me on all the socials. I'm Nikki the Death Doula. I am on Facebook, Instagram. I'm now on Threads. Uh, Twitter's still there for now. I don't know. Find me on LinkedIn if you want. I, I use it, but I don't not the same (laughs) anyway but please follow this podcast wherever you're listening to it now hit that little follow button and do me a solid and review it as well because more people will find me if I have more reviews and I want to help more people if you really love what I do and you would like to support me and help me in providing pro bono services to clients who cannot afford them you can join me over at patreon it's patreon.com slash Nikki the death doula I provide grief affirmations twice a week it's a lot of writing i do for y'all because i love you uh and you get early access to the podcast without those obnoxious ads in the middle or wherever they are and some any other bonus content the videos i have of my interviews i usually put up there unless the recipient asks me not to then i don't (laughs) so but all that and i will hope i'm hoping to do some q a's and some some patreon events down the road when i get more patreons so I would appreciate that. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're having a wonderful week. And remember, as always, your grief is yours. Your feelings are valid. Grief doesn't always have to suck.